Blessed is the man who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. But the man who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night, he is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does, prospers. Is a you are an awesome looking crowd. Uh, it's great. It's great. Oh golly, Willow, <laughs> Daddy rocking Willow. <laughs> we got a rocking Willow back there. <laughs> I really like that. We're gonna we're getting one of those. Places. Can you turn these monitors off? Are they off on my on my voice? Yeah, that'd be great. We're getting one of those in July. Well, we're not. <laughs> Just it's another Abraham thing going on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. You know, after all the diaper phase, it's okay. It's good. Yeah. Anyway, that's another thing. So this morning, uh, on a serious note, I want to get into something. I, I really feel like I, I need to say something, need to share something with you uh, concerning the events of last week. Um, you've heard a lot about it. In fact, here's a picture. Um, you know what I'm talking about in Washington, D.C., um, horrific events. But yet at the same time, I look at this and what do you see? You see cross, you see Jesus saves, you see. So there's a lot of things that were going on in that event that um, we don't hear about. This picture comes from a, um, a childhood friend through, we went through grade school, through high school together. He was there. So I have a friend that was there. Kathy knows someone that was there at the event. So we, we kind of get our information from people who are there. And I don't know about you, but that's where I go to, you know, people who are there. And that's what we do in the Bible. Who, were they there? You know, if they were there, that's where we get our information from. And that's what we want instead of these other parties. And that's what we have. And so I just want to share some things with you. Um, and what we get here, I feel like as pastor, and as the church, our role is to be the, um, turn the heat down, turn the heat down. So get, get it off the boil, get back to reality, speak the truth, speak the truth. And so the truth is, uh, as Paul tells us, it reminds us, um, he says in Ephesians 6, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And as humans, we so often want to go against flesh and blood. You, as followers of Jesus, you need to know that there are forces at work that you, that would be outside of this world, outside of this realm. And that, that realm is very much more real than this realm because we don't belong here and ultimately we end up in that realm for eternity, right? So we're just passing through. So there, excuse me, there are forces that are at work, and we need to keep that in mind all the times. You know, these times that we're going through, these things that are happening are not anything new. They're not new in history. They're, they're not a surprise to our Heavenly Father. He wasn't surprised by this at all. The first century church, as you look at history and you look at the church, the first Christians, what they went through in the persecution that they went through was much greater than this. You know, our, currently our brothers and sisters in China are going through some persecution. They're, they're tearing the churches down. They're tearing the state churches down in China. I don't know if you follow that at all. But so we see this happening and it has to happen. It has to happen, okay? I've read the book. <laughs> um. 
So we should not fear. And if you're a follower of Jesus, you need to understand that, that your future is secure. Your future is very secure. God hasn't changed. And he hasn't changed his call to you and I, for you and I to be his hands and his feet in this world and to make a difference and to bring about change. It, must, it means that we need to be united under Jesus Christ. And, and I'm, I might get some kickback on this, but we're united under Jesus Christ and not the flag of the United States. I, re, I respect the flag of the United States, okay? I want to say that. But Jesus Christ is my goal, and he's my chief aim. And that's who, that's who I follow, and that's who I, I go with, Jesus Christ and him alone. So we must be agents of not only change in our world, but of peace and hope. And so as you speak about these, this event to other people, I hope you need to be speak. I hope that you're speaking peace and love and change and not adding fuel to fires. We don't need to add any more fuel to this fire. It seems to be burning hot enough as it is. We also should not put our political views above Christ's mission or his claim or the claim of a political party as God's party. I mean, Jesus Christ was not political. I don't know if you noticed that at all. Jesus Christ was not political at all, but yet he is supreme overall. Um, Ricky Altmiller, um, Kathy sent me this. Ricky Altmiller posted this. And uh, so I'm going to quote what Ricky wrote. I don't, where did you write this? Facebook? Okay, yeah. That's, that's, anyway, um, he wrote this, and I quote, We can and must do this one person, one relationship, and one neighbor at a time. We should, be, we should be moved to justice, truth, and unity. We also should not put our political views above Christ's mission or claim a political party as God's party. He is supreme over all. May God bring peace and unity to our land. May we come together, not for a nation or a person, but for the Savior. And so I, I felt the need that just to get this out there for all of us because that's what we're called to as a church. We're not called to this other stuff as a church. Yeah, we live in this world, we live in the United States, I, I understand that. But we need to know where the line is drawn and keep that line secure and straight. So, let me move on. Um, here's our logo. This is our logo we're using for this year for our theme, Gather, Grow, and Go. And um, today we're beginning the series, as Deb said. We're beginning our, our first series of 2021. Anybody having trouble saying 2021? I, I, I don't know how many times I wrote 2020. Or, you know, <laughs> I just, it's just an automatic. But, um, so this is, this, today's our first theme as it relates to gather, grow, and go. And so uh, what do we mean by gather, grow, and go? Well, let me just first um, look at this gather. Gathering is what we do. Uh, we learn from each other. We worship together when we gather. We sharpen each other. Um, and, and this is important as followers of Jesus, that as we come together, we sharpen each other. In fact, it's interesting that I, I have you version on my phone, and so I have a verse of the day that pops up. Anybody do that? Verse of the day pop up on your phone? Yeah? Okay. We, we, some of us do that. Two, a few. Okay. Anyway, so today's verse was uh, from Hebrews. It says, Do not neglect the assembling of the saints, as some are the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, how and all the more, as you see the day drawing near. And I thought, how appropriate, since we're starting by talking about gathering and growing and going and, and the harvest and planting and, and those types of things. So, so we gather together, together, and it's so important. You know, we witnessed last year and even now what happens when people can't gather. I tell you what, I believe that some of the things that happen with the riots and the unrest come because they're keeping people apart. You and I, every human being was created for community. We're created to be together. And so when we're not together, when people are left alone, crazy things happen. I'm going to tell you what, people come up with crazy thoughts. <laughs> you look out through history and see what they come up with when they're left by. You go to an island for, for a month and see what happens. You, know, you, you get crazy, you know. But we're made to be together, you know, and we're created for that community. Um, gathering is vital for our growth as followers of Jesus. So this year, we want to focus on, on these three things, and gathering in particular, I'm going to talk about that right now, um, and encourage you, I'm going to encourage you to, hopefully we'll be doing more and more in 
to encourage you to participate more in the gathering events that we have for you here at CFC. Um, so here's just some of our gathering options, just so you know. Obviously, Sunday morning, gathering together, coming together as followers of Jesus, celebrating Jesus Christ, coming before the throne of grace together in mercy. I don't know about you, but I think Joe May did an awesome thing this morning with the music selection. And it, was just, um, it was just great. And so we come together. You know, those songs all sound so much better when the room is full. You know, I love you, Lester and Kathy, but if you were the only ones here, it wouldn't sound so good. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it wouldn't sound as good. How's that? So, so, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, when I'm in the car by myself singing, it doesn't sound near as good as it does in the room is full. There's just energy here. You know, we bring it here. Just think about this. Every follower of Jesus who has the Holy Spirit living in him, Joe is bringing the Holy, her Holy Spirit with her. You know, Mary brings her Holy Spirit with her. You know, we all bring the Holy Spirit with her. How, how great is that light? The light of the Holy Spirit when we all bring the Holy Spirit with us to gather and worship. So it's important. Um, Another way is our Bible studies right here for Nobbin Way. It's right after the service. It's down in Fellowship Hall. So it, they, down there they talk about the, the sermon. So you know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's, yeah, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, but that's what they do at Rexton when we have service there. It's before the service. Uh, it's at 10 o'clock. So those are the times. Joining them in studying God's Word is so important. Proverbs 27, 17 says, Iron sharpens iron, so a man, so one man sharpens another. It's so important to, to say, what about this? Or what do you think about that? Or what's the word say about this? And somebody pops that up and we help each other through that. Another way to grow is through gathering, and through gathering is our weekly Bible studies. Currently this month, we're not having men's and women Bible studies, but they're just a great way to do it. We have the men's here. And every Thursday, and the women, well, they kind of, it's, both of them are ecumenical, so they go around from different places. And the women are uh, here, the Methodist Church. Uh, That's all. Pardon me? That's all. Just those two? Okay. And so, so they'll, they'll meet, and I don't know, they'll, they'll say after winter probably is when they usually pick it up again. So we'll do that. You know, and the, another thing we're going to be doing is promoting life groups more. Um, those of you that are in a life group or have been in a life group, you know what I'm talking about. Life groups are just, I think, are essential. When you're part of a life, part of a life group, you're, you're basically doing life together and you're doing church together as you grow together. Folks, I see a time coming. I don't know when, but I just, I just see a time coming when the church and all the followers of Jesus are going to be under stress, under persecution in some way, shape, or form. I've been seeing it in other parts of the world, and if you're not seeing world news and missing those things, you're missing out. In, the, in Canada right now, you can't preach the entire Bible because it's hate speech. The next step is to stop that churches. There's just steps that are happening, and, and um, the church is going to be under persecution, and, and we may get to the point where we can't meet together. We've seen that in other states, right? This, during this pandemic where some states didn't allow churches to gather together. Praise the Lord, our governor didn't do that here. We could meet and we've tried to be responsible in all that, how we meet and what we do with the masks and physical distancing. And we're trying, and we're really working and you guys have done a great job and I appreciate that and thank you for that. Um, but those who are in life groups, when persecution hits and churches have to close because of that persecution, because of those things, those people in life groups are going to be miles ahead of everybody else. Just kind of like we've seen here when we did online giving and we did our, our virtual uh, services, being online, being uh, through Facebook, being through those different formats. We were way ahead of some other churches that didn't do that. So we're just trying to look down the road and say, you know what, this stuff's happening. And a life group is a way to grow. Man, I can't tell you what it's done for Kathy and I years ago, but being in life groups are just they are impactful in your life. Um, so join a life group, or better yet, start a life group. And if you say, but damn, I really want to start a life group with my neighbor or this person, I just don't know how. Kathy and I would love to come and help sit with you for a while, help you do that. Um, we just want to see them go and grow and, and do those things. So another way we gather, and this is a fun way, is through our movie night. We gather at movie nights, 
And once a month we have movies and, and the movies are, um, you know, sometimes are more entertaining than not. But, you know, we talk about those things a little bit about the movies depending on the film. But it's just a good way for the church to come together. This way? Okay, you're not hearing this mic? Can you hear me now? Okay, I'm sorry about that. My wife was giving me the arm. And <laughs> That's why she sits in the back. <laughs> but anyway, I thought she was talking, doing something about movie nights. Like, next week, it's next week. <laughs> I just work here, okay? <laughs> Anyway, so, so we're moving nights. Um, the great way um, to help grow as believers. So these are just a few ways of the ways that gathering is so important and available to us to help us grow. Um, some years ago, Kathy and I, many years ago, were, were landscaping our house. And uh, those of you who have done that, you know what I'm talking about. You got to dig holes. You got to put, f figure out where you're going to put things. And, and it was in the fall, which is the best time to plant shrubs and trees and things like that in the fall. And, and so we're doing those things. But winter hit early that year. It does that sometimes up here, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, what happened? And so we had some shrubs that weren't planted and they weren't in the place, weren't ready for it. So we, um, I just, you know, put a hole in the ground, stick these shrubs in, and we're just going to, you know, deal with it the next year. So that, and that spring, that next spring, you know, we started doing the things with shrubs that we really need to, like watering, fertilizing, watering. And the summer was hot, and I remember watering and watering. And we planted flowers. And that year we planted flats and flats of flowers all around our house. And it was, just, it was really nice, but it's a lot of work. And we haven't done as much since. <laughs> and, and, you know, just for a reason. Anyway, so um, fast forward a couple years. I noticed that, that the shrubs were growing, but there's one shrub that just wasn't growing quite like the others. In fact, it didn't look as healthy. The others are taller and they're looking healthier and bigger. And it's like, what in the world? So I decided to dig up the shrub. And guess what? Um, in my haste to get this in the ground, I planted it in the plastic container that it was in. <laughs> I mean, so I remember thinking, all right, I'll just put this in the ground. And next spring, I'll dig it up and I'll do it right. You know, it'll be good. But it'll be safe in the ground because you got to get it in the ground, right, to keep it over the winter. Yeah, well, it doesn't work that way. So, um, so um, I just forgot to dig it up and replant it properly. My point is, and all, most of you already know this, that... Plants need to be planted properly. They need to become established. That means the roots need to go. And in this plant, because it's in the container, the roots couldn't spread. The roots couldn't do anything. In fact, the roots were trying to come out the little holes at the bottom of the container, you know. Roots will grow if you give them a chance. But they need to be in good soil. The plant needs to be put in good soil. It needs to be uh, fertilized. It needs to be watered and those things. Soil is so important for these things. Um, so plants need to be planted and to, to have that uh, in there. Psalms 1 verse 3 tells us this about, about a person that's rooted in their faith. They shall be, let me get to this, be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither in whatever he does. Look at this now. He prospers. The person that's planted by streams of water and yielding its fruit and fruit and season and leaf doesn't wither, that person prospers, it says. Prospers meaning does well, does good, is successful. In order for a seed to grow, it's got to be planted. And the seed is planted in the soil. The quality of soil has a huge impact on the growth of that seed. We lost a, a, um, a mountain ash tree one year, just kind of fell over, strong wind. So I cut it down and dug it up and I put another mountain ash in. I noticed that, the, that the, the stump just didn't look right. Put another mountain ash and I've been fighting with this mountain ash and I really think there's something in the soil at that spot that's not allowing the mountain ash to grow well. I'm having difficult troubles and I keep working on this thing but I'm, I'm thinking I probably will wind up losing this, this tree. 
And I don't think it's because of how I've done anything, because it wasn't the mountain ash I planted, it wasn't in a plastic container. So. <laughs> but I think it's the soil. The soil is so important for the tree, for the seed. On your seat, when you came in, you had a little card, and that is a seed. That is a, it is a morning glory, heavenly blue. Okay? That's the seed that you have. And, and this seed, and you can take that home, and you can decide to plant that seed if you want. You can do with whatever you want. But it, and maybe if you plant it, it's, it's, a, it's that you keep that reminder of what we're talking about here alive in your, in your home when you see it. But, but in this pot, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do this. Um, here, I'll just use this pot right now. This pot got some good soil. I, I, I bought some good soil. It's because this time of year, I can't really dig much up. I tried, but it's pretty tough. So I got some good soil, and, you know, it's, it's um, you can tell it's just by feeling the soil how it is, you know. This stuff had some, some other things in it, some fertilizer in it, and it's organic. So I've got some good soil in this pot. And then here, because of the seed, the seed these seeds need to be um, in water overnight. You can't just take them out of the packet and plant them. Anybody try that? Yeah, it, it's, it, it, it's better to take the seed and let it, in order for it to germinate, to put it in water overnight, okay? And what's interesting is how much bigger the seeds have gotten because they've been in water overnight. So I'm just going to, you know, you, you plant this seed and you, you, you can't put it, you put it under the soil, but you don't want to put it too deep because it's got to get... Uh, enough rain, moisture, water, sunlight, things like that. So I planted it. I'm going to leave this here during this series. And I'm going to keep watering. And I'm going to keep taking care of it. And, and we'll just see what, what, how this thing pops up. And I think maybe, maybe we'll do the same with this. You know, I put, there's some good soil in here too. This, this had a plant that Darcy planted in this summer. And, and um, so we're going to um, do some things there too with that. And just keep this in front of in front of us um, during this this uh, series, so we can just see how that it, how it goes. Turn with me in your Bible, if you would, please, to Matthew chapter thirteen. Matthew chapter thirteen. Let's get into this. So this is not working at all. If I do this, you can't. Okay, monitor two on for the microphone. Okay. Okay, so. My, Ch Matthew chapter 13, um, we're going to look at the parable of the sower. Now, here in 13, um, Jesus is starting to tell parables. And, and this, is a, this is the point in his ministry that he's telling parables. And he tells a lot of parables in this chapter and from here on. And a lot of his parables were confusing to people. How many have read a parable of Jesus and found it confusing anyway? And so he always had to explain the parables to people, especially his disciples, you know. Uh, they needed to know. So today we're using the parable of the sower, Matthew chapter 13. Look at verse 3. And he told them many things in parables, saying, here we go, A sower went out to sow. Makes a lot of sense. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, and they, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on the good soil and produced grain, some 100-fold, some 60, some 30. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, I want you to notice something, that this sower, this farmer, this person that he's talking about, when he sowed the seeds, he didn't, he didn't just put them in a specific spot. No, he, he cast them all over, okay? Just those of us from Indiana understand Johnny Appleseed. We, he cast his apple seeds all over. And, and so he would, you know, today... He would use something like this, this fertilizer spreader, this rotary spreader down here. It's rotary, and it just casts them all over as opposed to a drop spreader, which puts them in a specific spot. Okay? My point is that the gospel of Jesus Christ, the seed, needs to be cast. It needs to be put out to everybody. Okay? Everyone needs to hear it. Not the one particular group, not the one particular person or individual, 
by using a drop spreader, just, just here. We need to get the gospel of Jesus to everybody. Let him who has ears to hear, let him hear. Everyone needs to hear and have the opportunity to respond to the good news. But that response just depends on their heart. After the parable, Jesus' disciples told him, they said, hey, we don't get it. We don't understand. So after eight verses of rebuke, Jesus explains the meeting. Go down to verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. Okay? This is what was sown along the path. And for what, is, what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As I'm giving you these examples, you're probably in your mind going, oh, I know, so and so, yeah, that's what happened to, uh-huh, okay, yeah, I experienced, or they, you, you, some of that will happen. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. So Jesus is giving us four different scenarios of seed being spread in this parable. And he explains that the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word, the good news that's shared with others. So as we go out, we're taking seeds out with us and we tell somebody about Jesus and give them the good news. And then the soil is the heart of the person where the seed of the good news grows. Jesus makes it very clear that the problem in the parable, the problems aren't with the seed, but the problems are with the heart. It's always with the heart, depending on what kind of soil the seed falls onto. So I want to take a look at the four different types of soil. Let's break it down a little bit that we see in the parable. So first of all, we have when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes, snatches it away, snatches away what has been sown in his heart. So the seed has already been planted into the heart. This is what was sown along the path. So this heart, in your notes, here we go in your notes if you're following along. This, this is a oblivious heart, a hardened heart, an oblivious heart. Some, some people don't want to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. I can attest to that. I've, I've talked to people and they just said, Tim, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to go there. I don't want to hear it. Or, or they, even, they don't even, other people are just oblivious to it. You can tell people about the good news of Jesus Christ and somehow it just goes, ever, ever do that? It just goes in one ear and out the other. It's like, aren't they getting anything? Whether by personal choice or by innocent oversight, this parable is clear that the seed will not grow in un, unreceptive soil. The soil has to want to receive the seed. The soil rejects the seed. It rejects everything. In fact, the enemy comes and snatches away the seed because he doesn't want the seed to have any chance to take root and grow in a person's life. This is why we say that when a person comes to Jesus Christ, the first 24 hours are so important in that person's life. Because Satan will be working overtime. And I've had people tell me they've come to Jesus Christ. They say, Tim, why is this happening in my life? Why am I feeling this? Why is that happening going on in my life? Because Satan wants you. He knows he can't have you, but he wants you. That's why it's happening. So we say, yeah, let it happen then. Because you're not getting me. But some people, they have an unreceptive heart. And it's easy to snatch that way. This kind of soil doesn't produce, reproduce because it can't reproduce. The next one. For what was sown on, on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word. Okay, they've heard the word, immediately receives. They say, yeah, that's great, yeah. 
with joy. Yeah, yeah. I, I think of the altar calls when people have come down and, yes, I've taken Jesus as Savior and Lord. And yet, he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. Everything's going great. Yes, I've taken Jesus to be Savior and Lord of my life. Yes, I've got the word in me. Hardness comes. Trouble comes. Know somebody like that? Maybe you've been there. You know, it happens. You know, this soil is the soil of a troubled heart. And it produces shallow roots. Life is long and hard and difficult. And the heart that is troubled by the obstacles of adversity of life will not reproduce. It's not going to have deep roots. Currently in our nation, there are obstacles that can keep you from nurturing your seed if you are not careful. I don't know about you, but the news can suck you in really fast right now. And I'm just going to encourage you. There is, there is this really cool idea when it comes to being sucked in by the news, by those events. And that is, uh, it's an off switch. I don't know if you knew that the TV has one, but it's great. <laughs> it's, a, it's a powerful tool. Turn it off. If you find that anxiety is building because of all these things, turn it off and turn it on. Just think, what would happen if, if for every minute you, that you're watching the news and watching all that, that you followed it up with the same amount of time in the Word of God? It's interesting to me that, that most people spend a small amount of time of their day in the Word of God. You know, maybe anywhere from five minutes to an hour. I don't know what you do, but I know one person does spends a half an hour a day, and that's really cool. Working at it this year, that's great. But whatever you do, it's interesting to me that how much a little word of God can overcome a whole lot of that other stuff. You know what I mean? You watch a lot of this TV, you watch a lot of that news, you watch a lot of that stuff, but the word of God is way more powerful than that. So to these people in the parable, they're interested in the gospel. And they even embrace the gospel message. But over time, without tending to the growth, without nurturing it, you're not growing the seed of the gospel, they fall away when tough times, when tribulations happen. And those are things that all followers of Jesus face. We all experience tough times. Because you're a Christian, you've heard me say this, because you're a Christian, doesn't mean life's going to be great from here on out. It doesn't mean that at all. But it means you have tools to help you with that. Okay, Jesus, in fact, Jesus actually warned us about this. He said this. He said, These things I have spoken unto you. Why? So that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Take Circle that word tribulation on your notes or in your Bible. It's important. In the world, you're going to have problems. You're going to have trouble. You're going to have difficulty. But take courage. Why should we take courage? Because I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. That is so important. So shallow roots won't support a person through the hard and difficult times. It takes deep, strong roots growing a healthy soil to weather the storms. The third one. Let me keep moving here. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. Here we have a distracted heart. A distracted heart can't grow roots needed to sustain life. A heart that cares more for the things of the world, for the things of making money, for the things of profit, of gain, things, for the things of the world, than for the things of the kingdom is not healthy soil needed to experience kingdom growth. Money, status, power, prestige, otherworldly desires choke out the ability of the seed to get the right nutrients and care needed to grow. Unhealthy and distracted soil is not the place for a seed to grow and definitely not of the place to find a harvest of healthy fruit. Finally, number four. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed 
bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. This is simply a fertile heart, a good place to plant. Like the soil I put in here, it's good soil for this seed to grow. I'm going to water this. In fact, a little... Get it, get it watered, get it a start, get it growing, you know, and we'll see if we can't get that thing up and growing before this series is over. Just a little sprout, but it's a fertile heart. A heart that's fertile accepts the gospel seed and does the hard work of nurturing and growing it. The heart, this heart is open to the truth of God's word and open to the transformation that's going to take place. This heart is made ready by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. You know, when you're going out and you're planting seeds for the kingdom, be praying about the Holy Spirit going ahead of you. The Holy Spirit is the one who gets the hearts ready to receive. And it doesn't receive until time. This heart doesn't just experience growth for themselves, but actually impacts people around them. Healthy soil is where the soils have the best chance in life to grow life-giving plants and trees. For instance, you think about what a single apple tree does. You think about that. An apple tree, just a single apple, all the seeds inside of an apple. A single apple tree can bear enough fruit to feed several families. And, and in the, it gives shade on hot days. And, and in the spring, the apple blossoms. I, I remember one year at, here in Nobbinway, the apple blossoms were just so powerful. You could smell that all over. And a seed spreads and multiplies into who knows how many other apple trees over its lifetime. So my question is for you, and for those who are watching on the internet and the web, wherever, what kind of soil describes your heart? What kind of soil describes your heart today? Are you indifferent to the good news of Jesus Christ? Are you needing to spend some time on the condition of your heart so that the seed of the gospel can grow and have healthy roots? Do you find yourself distracted? Are there too many things in your life that are just clamoring and vying for your attention and care? If you ever had a garden, you know, like I know when I grew up, my dad had a big garden. It's hard work. Gardens are hard work. In fact, when we were together, um, I was talking with my mom about a garden, talking, reminiscing about the garden we used to have. And I, one of the best part, times about the garden was taking a salt shaker out and grabbing a ripe tomato and eating the tomato like an apple off the garden. Eating different vegetables right out of the garden. Peas right out of the garden. Snap those things and pop those things. That was really good. But this is no different than the eternal garden of your heart where the seed of the gospel and the kingdom are trying to grow. They need healthy soil. And they need consistent care. So, what can you do this week to strengthen the soil of your heart? Here are some real simple things. One, make sure you're spending dedicated time in the Word. And time in prayer. You need that relationship home. You can't have a healthy relationship without spending time with the person you want to have the relationship with. It's simple. Remove the distractions. I challenge you. Maybe cut down your TV viewing a little bit. Maybe cut down your social media. <laughs> I know some people will be coming to the hospital a little bit more because of they can have social media withdrawal syndrome. I just made up a new thing. <laughs> but have that time every day with the Lord. Get away from those distractions. We need to keep in mind that a rotary spreader is to be used as you and I spread God's word to the people we come in contact with every day, every week, every month throughout this year. Only you can know what your heart is. I'm not judging that or anybody else is judging that. That's up to you. But you can also be the one to spread the seed. Spread the seed of the Word of God.